Kenya's north is a vast country of rugged dramatic scenery whose native people have shunned the modern world and indeed are contemptuous of it. Its hot and dry vistas are patched with scorched desert, merciful oasis, beautiful plains, barren mountains, enchanting forest and a selection of wildlife and prehistoric sanctuaries. People who live in this part of the country fight to preserve their traditional lifestyles despite their dwindling numbers and the influx of Western customs. The smallest and the most threatened ethnic group in Kenya today, the El Molo, inhabits a bay in the north of Loyangalani in Masabe South District, in the eastern shore of Lake Turkana. Although their population is only 300, the El Molo has attracted considerable attention for their unique way of life, fishing life. The name El Molo is derived from Ma word, Molo, meaning those who don't move. This was meant to describe the El Molo way of life. It means they live near the shores of the lake, unlike the nomadic neighbor tribes who are always on transit. Through cleverness and courage, the El Molo are able to live in a difficult and friendly environment. Long ago, the El Molo lived on a small offshore island that dotted on the shoreline of Lake Turkana providing protection against raiders from the north and east. Over the decade, much has changed. The El Molo now live in two small villages, Nayeni and Komote, which are 8 kilometers and 13 kilometers respectively from Loyangalani. Lorian Island, which lies in the middle of the two villages, is where they have their sacred shrines that serve a great purpose to the community. It consists of bare lava rocks characterized by sparse shrubby bushes and spike grass along its water edges. El Molo cultural dressing is remarkable they dress exclusively in the materials most readily available to them. Skirts woven with palm leaves locally known as silla. The women and girls are great lovers of adornment. They specially decorate themselves with necklaces made of fish bones, whereas men traditionally wear only a small apron. The life of the El Molo is languishing and generally based on fishing with great ability to throw the spears, fishing rods, made from the roots of an acacia and ropes made from dawn palm fiber. Their traditional rafts are made of dawn palm logs tied with ropes. Every two or three years, a special ceremony called Njore is celebrated among the El Molo tribe. The ceremony is celebrated in Moite, a small village 65 kilometers from the El Molo village. It is here that the elders go to pay homage to their ancestors. The ceremony is climaxed by hunting and killing hippo for the feast. Young warriors do the hunting of the hippo. Dancing and songs pay a tribute to the ancestors before the elders turn on the young warriors and whip their backs to bring out any slightest show of fear. <laughs> ambayo wase wanaenda kuwinda kiboko kiboko kwa mila ya kielmolo ni ni muhimu sana kwa sababu ukiua kiboko wewe naonekana kama juja juja sana kwa sababu unaona hiyo mnyama ni kali lakini ukiua wewe unakuwa shujaa mbele ya jamii kwa hivyo inaheshimiwa zaidi na kila kila kijana ya elmolo lazima aende hiyo nyakrim na uwe kiboko ili ajioneshe hiyo hiyo uchija wake hippo killing is very dangerous divine and ceremonial a chosen hunter must hurt himself literally without hesitation at the target hippo and ultimately throw himself on the raving hippo subdue and kill it 
this chosen warrior will not be allowed to consume any of the delicacy until he returns home. However, he will be the hero of the whole tribe and will be feted for his whole life, wearing special animal bone earrings to signify his bravery to all. Hippo hunting is a dangerous venture, permitted only to the male circumcised populace of the clan. Initially, the warriors must identify a single hippo as it grazes on the shores of Lake Turkana. During the day, hippos spend most of the time either semi-submerged or basking on a sandbar. At night, they graze. This is when they are most vulnerable, when they are stalked. Once they have identified their prey, the hunting party forms a semicircle around it and commence taunting it with using scary two sounds. One encounter with a hippo's nine-inch tooth jaws can snap a man in two, so immediately the first mortal blow is dealt, the rest of the hunters join in the attack to assist in a quick kill. The hippo is then tied with a rope called kanyo and transported to the settlement. There. The villagers praise the warriors with songs of jubilation over a successful hunt. These songs, siur, are sung as women adorn the hunters with beads. circumcised both sexes, a culture copied from the Maasai. Girls are circumcised on the same day of their marriage. Like all the other communities in Kenya, the El Molo community also celebrates their marriage ceremonies. Discussion of marriage between the parents of the boy and girl is like in many other tribal cultures, a discussion of dowry. The currency of payment of dowry is in form of three or four dome palm logs for building rafts, fishing harpoon, and a net of palm strings. The bridegroom gives a new name to the bride the same day of the marriage ceremony. Intermarriages with the Turkana and Samburu communities are now accepted among the El Molo community. After the marriage ceremony, the woman is responsible for building huts, 
cooking and other domestic work. Men are responsible for fishing and hunting for food. Religion plays a very important role among the Elmola people. It is to this effect the community has created Roto site. The site plays an important role in the religious practice of the Elmola people. Since time immemorial, the community has considered the site as holy ground because of its sacred shrines that were erected for the purpose of prayers. The El Molo community has seven clans, four of which have their own individual sacred huts known as Gantes. The Gantes offer prayers for specific needs of the community and individual members to a god known as Wak. Some of these clans include Orikara, Origaltite, Marle, and Orisiole. Each of these clans have different visible sacred symbols that the spiritual leader offers to work. Kuna clan kama saba hivi. Saba. Katika hiyo saba, inne, hiko na hiyo chirines. Mba individual chirines. Kila, kila klain hiko na, 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 na gantes yao. Na, na kwa sababu ya hiyo, kila gante hiko na papas yake, hiko na sababu yake. Eh, kuna gande ya Orikara ambaye naomba Mungu ili apatie jamii kiboko bila kiboko kuwa kali nao na wakiwa na shida wanaenda kwa hiyo gande waombewe na vifaa pia waombewe au mara itapo gulutrukani na yeye unintu kuti ni poga na ari gulutrukani ape kanaji Namayanichoita <laughs> Uh, marle Marle ni gande ngine mzuri sana kwa sababu ni kama uh, security ya, ya community ni usalama wakienda kwa hiyo gande wanaona kama wamepata usalama kwa sababu hawa ni watu ambaye wanaomba Mungu kwa njia ya kuchukua mchanga kutoka kutoka Moite Moite ni milima moja Walmolo wanaamini ya kwamba ni ni mlima yao mtakatifu. Kwa hivyo walichukua mchanga wakichukua mchanga kutoka huko wanaomba Mungu kwa kila kitu wanataka. Wakitaka kuomba mvua wanaomba kwa njia hiyo mchanga. Wakitaka kukasi wa maadui yao wana wanakasi kwa hiyo njia hiyo mchanga. Na kwa njia hiyo wana ni kama ni kama usalama kwa security hiyo kandi. Hiyo vifaa ambavyo hivyo hiviko ndani ya Gandy <laughs> Najana Gandala Marle, Tatu. Gather the cat, Yanni, Toki, Nyar, Tongani, Nisudana, Nyar, Abisa, Dutorno, Gulubani, Neda. Alla Pumara, the Ganare, Ketinjan, Nigamayan and Jan, Tatu Gandhi. Gandhi and Guinea Gandhi are horizontally. Horizontally, Wale wana wana protect Amarana and a Chunka Sana community, Quajilia. Magonjo. Lakini si magonjo yote. Ni magonjo ambaye ni ya ni ya ko ama trot. Eh wakija wakija kwa hiyo gande wana wana tupa mate. Yaani mkubwa ya kande hiyo ama spiritual leader hiyo kande wanapatia mate. Alafu mtu kwa bahati nzuri anaweza kupona. Aya do naana gande do kororunkunoti 
lamayan lamayan do ro pokolu do moil to ngani na ya woni na na tak na na tak ajup aya na tak ku nin ku goso aya do ro bage kolo nyanget na bage pawo ke rungun oti wo kolo gogo moti min cho rungun rungun aja wo ngwan aya takula kula e wunye gurungun e rikadite migante ambaye inahusu uhai uhai ambaye wanaomba kwa ajili ya watoto kwa hivyo mama ama watu vijana wakiwana na wanakaa kwa muda mrefu bila kupata watoto wanaenda kwa hiyo jamii kwa hiyo mkubwa ya gandhi hiyo ama spiritual leader yao na mama tabilikwa kwa hiyo gandhi na pata kuna do kuna do ambaye cap do ni, ni kitu ambaye mtu pato chonga walipata tu akiwa msichana na mvulana iko katika mfuko na huwezi kuonekana hivi anapatia mama hold hivi kwa kwa paji la mkuu na mkubwa anatema mate alafu mama kwa kwa ile imani anaenda na kwa baadhi mzuri mara nyingi wanafanikiwa kupata pata watoto kwa hivyo akiomba Mungu anasema patia Mungu patia huyu mama ambaye amekaa sana mtoto mfulana mtoto mfulana eh, msichana ili apate kushukuru wewe. Kwa hivyo hakuna kitu ya kuabudu kama kama sanamu hivi hapa. Hakuna. Kwa hivyo ni ni hiyo tu kwa ajili ya <coughs> ya kante. Kile ganda ngo rongo. Ole ga na ngara usini ngara pe ngoro yi no wena ratin tomo ngara pe golu ngoro ne unene tana tata kona pokorar na chen na metal to ngane obol ni nyai ngara tu ajo ne jutu tana chaka na ngara ja to ngoche ngara bo 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 no ngoro na to gol to ngoro ngi na go ana aje woni no mono gine ba mojo kona ja The Almolo community is served by only one dispensary, which is situated in the Catholic Mission compound. The El Molo people are not far away from this dispensary. 
Securing funding by the government for a freshwater drinking source would tremendously improve the lifestyle of the El Molo without damaging their culture or traditional integrity and allow this small tribe to continue in the future. The lack of social and health services in this indigenous community is especially hard on women and children who suffer gender inequalities and discrimination. The remoteness of the inhabitants might have cushioned their culture, but frequent raids by nomadic tribesmen from southern Ethiopia and disease have left the El Molo community teetering to the brink of extinction. Their culture is being eaten up by cultures of the surrounding bigger tribes. Inhabitants of the mainland settlement have adopted many cultural practices from their pastoralist neighbors as well as from Europeans who have come to Loyangalani. The El Molo have adopted some of the practice of other cultures. Their own beliefs, values and patterns of relationships remain to ensure the survival as a distinct cultural group. The El Molo community lives by fishing as the main economic activity, but today all living people around the lake have now started fishing, which brings high competition to the El Molo people. Due to all this, the community prefers a boundary in the lake for easing their main activity. The government, in conjunction with non-governmental organizations, have realized that it is important to protect this indigenous community. They have created a new meeting hall, an enclosed dome palm hut structure creating shade, where the elders meet and discuss community matters, and tourists can buy El Molo crafts, which in turn help supply some further economic stability for the community group needs. The government has embarked on alternative policies for the community-driven development of arid and semi-arid lands, affirmative action policies within the framework of the poverty reduction strategy and the free universal primary education program. If successful, these policies should be able to redress historical injustices and improve the overall situation of this indigenous community. Sarma, 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 Sarma,